Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sovar, and thank you for watching this second app game kit tutorial for Tier 1. Um, we are going to be doing some sounds, some physics, some dummy sprites, all sorts of cool stuff today. And we explained a little bit on how set display aspects, set virtual resolution, set resolution mode in the previous video. Uh, load sound is usually what is the command that you would use to load a sound of course. Um, you set an ID for the sound and what the file name is within the media folder. And the thing is with the ID system as I said before there is an image ID system, a sprite ID system, sound ID system, all sorts of that stuff. It kinda makes it so you can link certain commands for like a uh, play sound one that one is the ID number that links it to this uh, dot wave file since this is a one and load image we've talked before loads an image into memory basically which you can create a sprite from sprite is a two-dimensional image that you can interact with on the actual app that you make uh, we create sprite one and sprite two off of image one so you have two individual sprites and we create a third sprite called a sprite dummy. Now what on earth would a sprite dummy be and what would you use it for? Well there's many uses for a sprite dummy. It could be something for collision data. It could be used for uh, detecting something within a certain region. It's great for when it comes to like stuff with physics and also how to have certain mouse capabilities. What I mean by mouse capabilities let's just say you have a menu and each individual button is an image and then you have a background image well instead of cord like setting out the coordinates of the very left top corner and the very bottom right corner why not just make it so that you have a dummy sprite that appears whenever you press the screen and then when it collides with the certain images like start game load game it will actually start the game when those when the dummy sprite and the actual image collide and we're going to show how that works in this tutorial but with a different way so we set the sprite sizes 64 by 64 pixels um, we set the uh, the dummy sprite extremely small because we want it so like it acts like a collision system for our mouse like if you were to press the screen it would activate certain features in this case in this program we're going to make it so that it actually can move the objects around using physics collision and we're also going to make it say uh, example dot wave now this set physics wall bottom top left and right are very simple commands basically means since we have physics we're gonna have these physics applied to gravity and all sorts of cool stuff but we don't want our objects flying off of the screen a lot of times a lot of times you do especially in huge games but we also have this feature of having it where there's blockage on the right left top and bottom and you can set one or zero zero meaning there's not a natural wall on the bottom so they could go they hit everywhere else but if they go on the bottom they keep on going the only way to keep up with these objects is if we were to change the offset or set offset view which changed the universal x and y coordinates of the actual camera that's been that actually looks at the different sprites i know that that part for that might be slightly confusing to understand kind of have to see it but um we also have the set physics on or I'm sorry set sprite physics on what this does it activates the physics uh, characteristics of a sprite now you have the sprite number and the type of physics now if we were to click on this command and go to help and help at cursor it usually explains the different features uh, one would be static, two dynamic, and three kinematic. Now, I'm not so for sure like what kinematic does. I haven't really tested out yet, but I know that dynamic is very 
lifelike. Like if an object hits it, it keeps on moving from the collision of another object and all sorts of this stuff is affected by gravity. Static? Static means that it never moves, but it can still act as a barrier for other physics objects. So if a ball was falling from a certain gravity of y coordinates, and there was a static block on the bottom, and if the ball wasn't moving sideways or anything like that, but just straight down, it would hit the block, it would kind of bounce up, keep on bouncing a little bit, and it would stop right on the block. The block would never move, and that's what static means, and that's what dynamic means. Okay, so we move on. The set physics on 3 and 3. I don't know why I did 3. It really doesn't matter as long as it is a physics. Like, if you have the dummy sprite not on physics, if you were to have the dummy sprite move across an object, it wouldn't affect the physics uh, configuration of the object. It wouldn't go flying that way or somewhere because of the collision. It'll just go over the object. So I have to assign the dummy sprite a certain physics. Uh, characteristics, whether if it's static, dynamic, whatever. So we understand what a do loop is and what sync does. Now let's get into some interesting stuff. Here is set physics gravity, get direction x times 100, and get direction y 100. Now the set physics gravity changes the universal gravity in the two dimensional virtual world of your app soon to be 3D but that's not coming out until a little bit but the two-dimensional graphics or I'm sorry gravity system um, basically makes it so that if you were to have this variable at zero and this variable at zero your physics object would do nothing it would stay stationary because there's no gravity acting on it and gravity is a force which would make the object move um, if you were to change the force of gravity on the x value to a positive 100, your object would slightly move to the right, slowly. It would accelerate slowly and it would be constant speed until it hits something. And same thing for y, if it's positive, it would be going down. If the y was negative, it would be going up. And if the x was negative, it would be going left. And we also have this feature called a ghost sub. A ghost sub sub meaning subroutine subroutines within a program is individual little blocks of programs or tasks that are built into the program mm, excuse me to uh, kind of organize the program a little bit better now the go sub means that it will go to this uh, subroutine which is called addition yeah addition wow I got a brain fart there um, and what happens is when you hit this the code will jump to addition which is right here and then it'll start doing this stuff when it's all done there there's a return command which would jump back right to the spot where it was and then continue on that's basically what a go sub is there's also a command called go to but it will not return back to its original position unless you tell it to another go to command in here is say go to here which you would type in like a label like that which I can show you a little bit later now with addition um, we have if get pointer state equals one which means that if your fingers on the screen it will set the position of the dummy spray which is three to the x and y coordinates of where your finger is and else meaning that if this is not one or anything else or I'm sorry if this is not one or it's anything else other than one which it's either one or zero so this has to be zero it will set the dummy sprite into an outrageously far coordinates x and y so it doesn't interfere with anything within the app now so we go through here and it basically says okay if you push if you press the, uh, the screen on this coordinates the sprite will be right there if you take your finger off the sprite's gone of course with the dummy sprite you never see a dummy sprite it's invisible but it's still there and it can be used for collision and all that stuff now we have a for loop for next loop a for next loop is sort of bit like a do loop but it's only going to loop a certain amount of times. For example, we have 4x 
equals 1 to 2, so only loop two times, and it sets the variable x to how which number of times it's already been looped. For example, if we go the first time, x will equal 1, then if it loops again, x will equal 2. That's how that works. Now, if get sprite exists x, meaning that it will start at x equals 1, so if there's a sprite ID out there that exists that equals to 1, this statement will be true and it will continue on to if get physics collision x and 3 meaning that one of the two sprites that I initialize that has dynamic physics if they collide with my dummy sprite and if get sounds playing meaning that if there's a sound playing specifically sound 1 um, if it is not playing, I'm sorry, if it's not playing, if, if sound 1 is not playing and there's a collision, a physics collision, a specific type of collision with the two sprites with my um, dummy sprite, then it will play a sound, which is the example.wave sound. And of course, the sprites have to exist. If they, this is more like a precaution thing. If there was not this, if there were no get sprite exists, and for some reason within your code there's something where it deletes a sprite and then it tries to find it, it'll end up as a big error. But you want to keep this as a precaution. You can add as much sprites as you want to this program. You just have to add more and more numbers to this. This is just an example of what a for loop can be used for. So. It'll play the sound, it's, you have to close the if statements, and then you close the for, for loop with a next. That's why they call it a for next loop. Which will continue on to the return, shooting you back to where you initially started with the go sub, and then continues on with the code. So let's go on and show you what this program does. Uh oh. And yes, for some reason it did the uh, example dot wave. I'm gonna turn down the uh, volume in a little bit, it's a little annoying. But we can change the gravity based on the get direction x, which is uh, tilting your actual device or using the arrow keys to do so. Uh, we times it by 100 because it only goes from negative 1 to 1. So instead of negative 1 to 1, it does negative 100 to 100. And as you can see, it's kind of interesting how you can move around these. If you put the mouse around, it doesn't do anything until you click. Uh -oh. And as you can see, the uh, actual play sound right here is initialized when you click and hit one of these objects. Of course, the automatically, since there are two physics objects, you can move one physics object, hit another physics object, or a spread, I'm sorry it will react to that collision based on what type it is. If it's static, it's going to stay there, but you're going to be prevented from moving from the sprite. If it's dynamic, as these squares are, uh -oh. I can kind of move them a little bit. And of course, I could change the gravity, as I said before. And the sound works and all sorts of that stuff. And if I were to go all the way down, they hit the bottom. And that's the commands for uh, set physics, wall, top, left, right, and bottom. But that is our second tutorial. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Sovar. If you like this video, make sure to like it and also subscribe to my channel. Got a lot of cool other tutorials like for Minecraft and all sorts of stuff. Got Technic, got original Minecraft, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, make sure to comment on there if you have any questions. Share the video on Facebook. Twitter, Google+, and thank you so much guys for all your time, I appreciate it a lot, this is Mr. Sovar, see you later.